Is it just me or does it feel like everybody expects a tip for everything nowadays? Oh my god, your dog is so cute. Can I pet him? Of course. Do you mind answering this question real quick? Maybe I'm old, but I remember a time when a tip, or a gratuity as it's actually called, used to be just that. It was a small way of saying thank you after you ate at a restaurant, if your server was particularly friendly or helpful, it was a few extra bucks you'd leave behind, some spare change. But those days are long gone. Not only has the amount of money that you're supposed to leave as a tip gone through the roof, but now the list of people who are expecting to be tipped for merely doing their jobs is getting longer and longer every day. First, I wanna unpack the idea of percentage-based tipping because I think this is the most illogical part of it all. It used to be pretty standard to tip between seven and 10% of your bill, 12% was very generous, but now that expectation has gone up to a whopping 18, 20, or even 25%, and somehow anything less than that is considered an insult. That in itself is absurd, but what's even more nonsensical is the fact that the amount of effort that somebody is exerting has no relation to the price of the service or product that you're paying for. So percentage-based tipping just doesn't make any sense. If, for example, you were to go to a restaurant, let's say you just ordered like a side order of fries, your bill might only come out to about $4. But if you were to order an entire steak dinner, your bill might be $40. The truth is though, that the amount of effort that the waiter had to put to bring that food to your table was equal in both situations. But with percentage-based tipping, let's say you were leaving a 20% tip on that plate of fries, 20% would be 80 cents, maybe you round up to a dollar. But on that $40 steak, 20% would be $8. So you're basically leaving 10 times as much just because you ordered something more expensive, but that didn't affect the server's job at all. With this system in place, it also means that if you were to eat at a more expensive high-end restaurant, you'd be required to tip a lot more money than you would for getting a very similar meal at a more casual, less expensive place. You might be getting the same food, but because the bill is gonna be higher, you're required to tip more. But once again, the waiter isn't actually doing any more work. And then of course, if the restaurant decides to arbitrarily raise their prices, which let's be honest, they're going to, now you're not only paying more for the stated menu price, but you're gonna have to tip even more so because it's based on percentage, even though once again, that person isn't doing any more work. It's also worth noting that percentage-based tipping used to be calculated on the pre-tax amount, but that seems to have gone out the window now as well. Maybe because of the presets that they put on all the little credit card machines where you just pick a button and you don't think too much about it. But now not only are we tipping more on higher prices, but now we're tipping on the total after tax as well. So we're tipping a lot more than we ever were before. Another thing to be mindful of is that some restaurants will actually add in automatically a 15 to 20% gratuity charge if you have a large table. So they're basically adding a very generous and apparently mandatory tip, which is then not a tip if it's mandatory, but then they'll bring you the bill to the table and hope that you just don't notice and they'll ask you to tip again. So you're tipping on a tip, even though you've already been forced to give a very generous tip. What? So just to recap quickly here, with the current expectation, after tax and tipping on the tax and all that other nonsense, when all is said and done, you're expected to be paying about 25% more than whatever the price on the menu states, even if you get bad service. How about new? And the way that this is socially enforced is nothing short of emotional blackmail. We've all heard these sob stories about how restaurant servers are paid way below minimum wage, they only get a few bucks an hour, they need tips to survive, or how they're required to tip out a certain percentage of their daily sales to the kitchen staff so it actually costs them money to serve you if you don't tip generously, blah, 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 blah. And to all of that, I have two things to say. <laughs> First of all, and this should go without saying, but it is a business's job to pay its staff, not the customers. A business that can't afford to pay its employees a living wage can't afford to operate, can't afford to exist. In any other industry, the idea of asking the customer to pay for the employee's salary would be seen as insane, but somehow it's been normalized in the restaurant industry. I myself am a business owner, and let's say that I was looking to hire somebody. In fact, this is a true story. A few years ago, I was really busy and I was thinking about how I could really use some help. I could really use an employee to give me a hand with some things. And when I crunched the numbers, I realized that I couldn't afford to hire somebody. If I hired somebody and I paid them a decent living wage, I wouldn't be making enough money to cover my own bills. And if I hired somebody and I paid them the little that I could afford to be paying them, it would be exploitative and illegal. So I sucked it up and I kept doing all the work myself because my business was not at a point where I could afford to hire staff. 
But could you imagine if I decided that I was just gonna hire somebody anyways, and I told them that I could only afford to pay them $2 an hour, and then what I did was I called up all of my customers and said, hey, well, I have a new employee and I can't really pay them a full living wage, so I need you guys to start giving them generous tips so they can afford to put groceries on their table. That would be ridiculous, nobody would go for that. But that's exactly what happens in the restaurant industry, and somehow they've been given the legal authority to do that. But that brings us to point number two, which is that that's no longer even the case in a lot of places. Here in Ontario, Canada, servers now make full minimum wage, which is over $15 an hour. I believe it's about $15.50. And I'm not saying that that's a living wage in this part of the world because it's not, but the fact is that they're now making the same amount of money as every other retail and service employee. So why do they deserve tips, but nobody else does? Why do servers get $15 an hour plus exorbitant tips when the Walmart cashiers don't? Or the kid pushing the carts in the Costco parking lot doesn't? It doesn't make any sense. It's now very common for servers and bartenders here to be making over $75,000 a year after tips. And to be totally clear, I'm not begrudging them of that. I'm not saying they don't deserve a living wage or to make good money. I'm just wondering why the public has to be the one paying for it. And just a quick side note here for anybody planning to go off in the comments about how you have whatever, whatever expensive degree and such and such important job title, and you don't even make that much and they don't deserve to be making that much, stop. Everybody deserves a living wage. I don't care what kind of degree you have or what your job title is. The fact that a server or somebody working at a bar is making more money than you doesn't mean they should be making less. It means you should be making more. If you're working a high stress, high qualification job and you're earning less than a bartender or a server, you need to take that up with your employer because you're being ripped off. That doesn't have anything to do with anybody else. Moving on. All I'm saying here is that I worked in customer service, I worked in retail for a very long time in my late teens, in my early 20s, and I busted my ass. I did everything. I worked as a cashier, I stocked shelves, I helped customers carry big heavy items out to their cars and load them, and I'm not a very big strong person, but I still did it. I answered phones, I did sales. I stood as a verbal punching bag for every disgruntled Karen who felt entitled to make their voice heard, and I never received tips for any of that. I was just doing my job but so is everybody else. And the way we distinguish between who does and doesn't deserve tips makes absolutely no sense. But that particular point is now causing a lot of issues too, because now the list of people who feel entitled to ask for tips at their job is a mile long and only getting longer by the day. Tips used to be specifically for when you had a meal at a sit down restaurant, but now they're expected for takeout too. And feel free to lambaste me in the comments if you want to, but I don't see any real reason why I should be adding an extra 20% to my bill for somebody to hand me a bag as I walk out the door. Tips used to also be given to hairdressers, estheticians, people who do nails, that kind of thing. But again, only if they were the employee. And that's now changed because now even the business owner is expecting tips. And that makes no sense to me. Again, as a business owner myself, if you're the owner of the business, you set the prices. You decide what your services are worth, you decide what your time is worth, and you set the prices at whatever you want. Why should the public feel obligated to pay you over and above what you've decided your services are worth? When I was like 21 or 22, I was in a pub, and I walked up to the bar and I ordered a bottled beer, and the bartender took the bottle out of the fridge, popped it open and handed it to me and said, that'll be $5. So I handed him a $5 bill, and he scoffed, and he rolled his eyes, and he walked away from me. And I stood there feeling a little bit bewildered, like I didn't know I was supposed to tip him for that. How much do you even tip for something like that? The entire interaction was 10 seconds. Like it wasn't even like he poured me a pint. He just opened a bottle and handed it to me. What is that worth as a tip? I still don't even know. In that awkwardness, that uncertainty of like, am I supposed to tip in this situation? How much am I supposed to tip? That's a big part of this problem too. It just seems like tips are now asked for everywhere you go. They're expected for everything, for takeout, fast food, meal delivery, coffee, Ubers and taxis. Every cosmetic or beauty service ever, tattoos, piercings, dog grooming, landscaping, house cleaning, pretty much anything that you would hire somebody to do, you're expected to give them an additional generous tip over and above whatever that service is supposed to cost. I had my eyebrows waxed at the mall last weekend. It was $15 for a five minute service. An additional tip was expected despite the fact that the employees are all making at least $15.50 an hour. So it cost me nearly $20 after tax and tip for five minutes of a woman breathing her stale coffee breath two inches from my face while screaming over me at her coworker in a foreign language. Good times. Starbucks now expects tips. Chipotle now expects tips. Subway now expects tips. I've never used them myself, but my understanding is that meal delivery apps require you to input the amount that you're tipping at the time that you order before you even get your food. And the person on the other side can decide to either accept or decline your order based on how generously you've tipped. 
So you're giving someone a tip without even knowing if they're gonna do a good job because you're tipping them before the job has been done. And in fact, the quality of service you're gonna receive is probably largely dependent on how generous you're being with your tip. So once again, that's not a gratuity, that's a bribe. It seems like everywhere you go now, everybody's flipping an iPad towards you that's just gonna ask you a few questions while they stand over you awkwardly staring at you while you decide how much you're gonna give them. It's no longer a show of gratitude. It's now a high pressure sales tactic where you're stared at and intimidated and judged while you fumble between the buttons that say 18, 20, 25% and you try to do math on the fly and you just feel so uncomfortable. I've legitimately had people give me attitude or not say thank you if I've tipped them less than 20%. Like it's such an entitlement. In fact, at a restaurant I was at recently, when they brought the credit card machine to the table and the tip option popped up, it said 15%, service could be better. 18%, service was good. 25%, service was awesome. And I'm standing there thinking, wait, so if service could be better, I'm still expected to give you 15%, which by today's prices, a dinner for two, that's at least like a $12 tip for bad service. And on the flip side, if I'm gonna give somebody 25%, I want a lot more out of it than just some napkins and a water refill. With all of that said, I feel the need to clarify that I do tip when I go out to eat, at least wherever I feel that it's customary. I don't tip on fast food, I don't tip on takeout, but if I'm sitting down at a restaurant, I do tip and I do so reasonably. But if I'm being honest, I resent every second of it. It's not a show of gratitude. It's like I said, emotional blackmail, but of course I don't wanna be the only one not doing it, so I do it. But the result is that I go out to eat and use these other services a lot less frequently than I otherwise might because I know that it's gonna cost me so much more than just whatever the price is. It's just gonna be so much more expensive than it even needs to be. And maybe this is just me, you guys will have to weigh in on this, but honestly, I find the entire dynamic to be a bit demoralizing on both sides. On the server's end, they're basically required to act as your short-term butler, kissing your feet and dancing like a monkey for a few extra bucks. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. And on the customer side of things, I have two legs, like I can get my own ketchup. Maybe this is just me, I don't know. I just have never felt comfortable being waited on or being served. I don't like asking somebody to do something for me if I'm perfectly capable of doing it myself. Maybe it's just a weird hang up I have. You guys will have to let me know your perspective. It just feels demeaning to me. This conversation often leads to the debate of whether or not we'd all be better off if restaurants just factored the tips into the stated prices on their menus, raised the prices to accommodate it, and called it a day. And I think the answer is absolutely yes. It would eliminate the awkwardness, it would eliminate the pressure and the feeling of coercion, it would eliminate the bickering between friends and the on-the-fly math and the uncomfort of the situation, and it would allow everybody to know what they should expect to pay ahead of time so they could decide if that's something they're comfortable with and something they can afford. But of course, this would only work if those price increases were actually paid out to the staff as part of their wage. Unfortunately, I don't see any of this happening anytime soon anyways, because the restaurant industry loves tipping culture. It's an easy out for them to avoid paying their servers more because, hey, look, you get so many tips, you don't need it. They can also leverage it as a hiring incentive, which once again, costs them absolutely nothing. And servers love tipping culture too. Being a server or a bartender is now a very realistic way to earn a decent living without any formal education, any formal training, any qualifications, or really even being good at your job because apparently even if you're bad at your job, people are obligated to tip you generously. Plus when they make cash tips, they're obviously just pocketing that money and not declaring it on their income taxes. And so as usual, it's just the consumer that's getting screwed at the end of the day. And it keeps happening because we keep letting it happen because we're all just too lazy to make our own salads at home apparently. I think we're just gonna see more and more people expecting tips in their line of work as time goes on. In fact, I'd be willing to wager that it's only a matter of time before you go to the grocery store and as you're about to pay for your groceries, the credit card machine just asks you a few questions and the cashier is now asking for tips too. Mark my words, it's gonna happen. But I'm also aware that most of this is a uniquely North American thing. In a lot of other places in the world, leaving a tip is not only not expected, but in some cases seen as an insult, like you're implying that the person needs your charity. So I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. Leave me a comment down below and let me know where in the world you live and what tipping culture is like there and what your personal feelings are about it. In case you can't tell, I'm pretty salty about it. You can probably tell that though. For those of you who do live in North America or anywhere else where tipping might be customary, I'm very curious to know if you feel the same way that I do and if you feel that tipping culture discourages you from going out as much as you would otherwise like to because of the added expense. Let me know in the comment section down below. 
If you guys enjoyed this video at all, if you found it helpful, entertaining, insightful, interesting, anything like that, please go ahead, hit that like button. Please also subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I'm trying to get to 25,000 subscribers, so hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. You can follow me on Instagram at according underscore two underscore Nicole. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash according to Nicole if you'd like to further support this channel. Other than that, thank you guys so much as always for watching. Can't wait to read the comments in this one. I'll see you next week. Take care. Thank you.